So we're going to continue our look at linearization through this past AP multiple choice question. Uh, the problem went something like this. Um, we were told that f is twice differentiable. And all that means is that whatever the function is, is that we can find it, it, its first and second derivative. And th those two derivatives are both d differentiable. So we're dealing with the function f that is twice differentiable with f of 2 equals 1. So that means the point 2, 1 is on f. Then it also tells us at that same x value of 2 that the slope of f at 2 is 4 at the point 2, 1. And then it goes on to further tell us that the second derivative evaluated at 2 is positive 3. And all this information is very important for us to then approximate the functional value at 1.9 using the line tangent to the graph of f at x equals 2. Okay, so that was the multiple choice question the students had to answer. And it was multiple choice, and there are a few different choices there. Um, but we're going to go ahead and, and just work through it uh, without looking at the, the choices that we have. All right, so we're going to uh, approximate the functional value at 1.9. You might notice that we don't have an equation for f uh, to differentiate, but that's okay. That makes this problem easier if we don't have an equation. All right, so we're going to use the tangent line to help us with our work. So to write the equation of a tangent line, we have everything we need. Uh, we've got the x-coordinate, we've got the y-coordinate, and we have the slope. So we're going to begin by using point slope to write the equation of the tangent line. Okay, so we used x and y and m. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, put it in uh, y equals form. Um, but I'm going to leave it in this factored version right here. Okay, and all they wanted the students to do is um, just uh, plug in 1.9. Plug in 1.9 right here for x, so we can approximate whatever the functional value is at 1.9. So to do that, replacing x with 1.9. And this was actually on the no calculator section of that exam, but that's okay. If you leave it in this factored version, it's not hard to work with. So let's see what the approximation is on the function by using what the y value is on the tangent line. So what is this, 4 times negative 0.1 plus 1? Uh, negative, what, 0.4 plus 1 whole. So the y value that falls on the tangent line at 1.9 is actually 0.6. And that was one of the choices and that was the correct answer. Um, I don't know what the actual functional value is because I don't have the function to plug 1.9 into. Um, but this is all the students were asked to do. Uh, if the question had further asked, is this approximation over or under the actual y value on the function? Well, it's all about the concavity. Uh, the question didn't go into that kind of detail, but if, if we did, if we looked at this uh, notation right here, we see that the second derivative at 2 is positive 3, and because this is greater than 0, uh, we do know that the graph is concave up. And if the graph is concave up, if you can kind of connect back in your brain to some of the pictures we saw earlier, if the graph is concave up, we're going to actually hit the y value on the tangent line uh, first be before we actually um, uh, encounter the y value that's on the function. So if we were asked is this approximation more than or less than, well we're going to hit the tangent line first so this y value would actually be less than the actual y value on the function. I don't know what it is but it's probably going to be close to 0.6, just a little bit bigger than 0.6. So I wanted you guys to kind of see um, how um, you know this topic was addressed in a multiple choice question. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and transition, and you might want to find your handout that you received, um, data-based problems derivatives, because I'm going to write on that, and if you'll write on that with me too, um, those will be some examples um, of some different topics that we've um, kind of encountered in the past too. So kind of putting linearizations to rest, let's transition, find that worksheet, and uh, I'll join you there in just a second. 
All right, let's, um, let's kind of take a look at what we have here. This is database problems derivatives example one. Let the height of a tree be h of t. It's measured in feet over a 20 year period where h is an increasing differentiable function of t. Uh, so we can see that the h values are increasing here. Okay, and uh, time is given in years, and this is some data that we've collected from year zero up to year 20. So this is the various heights of the trees. So estimate the rate of change. So right there, estimate the rate of change. Okay, estimate the rate of change of the height of the tree at t equals one year. Uh, we don't have an equation, so all we're going to be asked to do is estimate. We can't actually find a derivative and plug one in, so we're going to estimate it. So let's find out where t equals one year falls. Well, if you look at the t values up here on the top row, uh, one falls somewhere here between zero and two years. Okay, so the best that we can do to estimate the rate of change is to use an average rate of change. So that's just delta y over delta x, or in this case, a change in height over a change in time. So uh, this would be a typical AP question. So uh, what we have here is a change um, the height in year, I guess, two minus the height at year zero all over two minus zero. So this is the difference of h values at these two times. Um, I'm going to go ahead and plug in the values here. h of two would be 3.5. And h of one, or excuse me, h of zero would be 2.5. I'm going to go ahead and include the units here. These are the h units on top, so this would be feet. And in the denominator, I'm going to have the 2 minus 0, and the units would be years. Okay, so cleaning this up here and estimating, I'm going to get 1 half, 1 half foot per year. Uh, that's all we can do is estimate a rate of change. So choose two points on either side of that time value, and we chose uh, the t uh, time value 0 and 2. All right, let's look at question two. Find the average rate of change. Well, that's what I just did here, delta H over delta T, uh, on the time interval from five to 20. So they're actually asking me um, here to find um, an average rate of change there. So following the same procedure that we did in number one, change in H over change in time. So that would look like H evaluated at 20 years minus H evaluated at five years all over 20 minus five. Okay, so let's go up to the table and find these values. So h of 20 is 34, h of 5 is 12. Uh, we're going to go ahead and include the units. Well, these are the h units of feet. It's good practice to include your units in, in this type of problem. Okay, and then 20 minus 5 would be 15 years. Uh, so that looks like it's going to be 22 over 15. 22 over 15 feet per year. So that looks like about one and a half feet per year. All right, let's look at example three. Use data from the table to find an approximation of h prime of 17. Well, that's actually the same question as number one. It's just that they want you to get used to notation. We're going to find an approximation of the height, the rate of change of the height at year 17, and we're going to explain the meaning uh, in terms of the height of the tree, show the computations that lead to your conclusions. All right, so something else I can do here is I can uh, begin my work by saying h prime of 17 is approximately, okay, and let's find 17. 17 falls between 15 and 20, so uh, we don't want to get too far away from 17, so the closest point to the left is 15 and the closest point to the right is 20. So that's actually a delta h over delta t. Okay, so in this case, h of 20 minus h of 15 all over 20 minus 15. Okay, well what's that going to look like? Let's find those y values. 34 minus 22.5. Uh, that would be feet. Let's include the units when we can and 20 minus 5 is, 15 is 5, 5 years. So I guess this would be after I worked it all out and got a decimal, um, that approximation is about 2.3 feet per year. And, and they don't care if you leave your answer as an improper fraction or as a decimal. I just went ahead and changed that to a decimal. In case I had a calculator, I'd do the calculations here.
Okay. Uh, we're not done until we explain the meaning of h prime of 17 in terms of the height of the tree. Okay. So let me kind of give you a template uh, to do that. So h prime of 17 means And let's start with the input here. The input is 17 and the output is this answer right here. So h prime of 17 means at t equals 17 years, the tree is growing at a rate of at a rate of 2.3 feet per year. And that's it. To, in, to explain the meaning of h prime of 17, we have to know that it's a rate of change. We have to address the input, easy enough. Well, what's 17? It's the year. And we have to address the answer. The answer is a rate of change. So somehow in our, in our explanation, we want to say that. So h prime of 17 means at t equals 17 years, the tree, let's give it some context, the tree is growing at a rate of 2.3 feet per year. I believe we're going to skip number four because if you read through it, you would see that number four is just a comparison of the average rate of change on two different time intervals. Um, so to justify your answer, it would just be the work that you're showing that would uh, verify uh, which, which time interval gives an average rate of growth that's faster than the other. So we'll skip that one. Let's look at number five. Can the interval with the fastest instantaneous rate of change or rate of growth be determined from the data table? Explain your answer. Uh, no, we can't find the fastest instantaneous rate of growth uh, because not all the values on the h function are given to us, nor is h given to us. So that's what we're going to write. No, not all h of t values are given. And if you wanted to also just say, or not also, but instead say, no, we don't have h of t, no, we don't have an equation for h of t, that would be um, just enough as well too. Okay, let's take a, a look at the second example. This problem has us lo um, looking at a particle that's moving vertically on the y-axis. Uh, this little guy's just going up, down, up, down, maybe pausing. Um, and what we're given is information about the velocity of the particle that's moving vertically along the um, y-axis. Uh, and it tells us the units of V are measured in units per second, and the function V of T having the values given in the table is twice differentiable. Again, that just means that V of T, you can find a derivative two times, and both those derivatives uh, would both uh, result in equations that are differentiable. It also tells us that the position of the particle at t equals 1 is 3. Uh, and another way to write that right up here, just something good to know, is that y evaluated at 1, 1 is the input, is 3. Okay, so that's the position of the particle. That's, that's where it's located at time equals 1 second. All right, so it looks like the time values are given from 0 to 10. We don't have all the time values from 0 to 10. Of course we don't. Um, and these are the different velocities. And you might, it might be worth studying the velocity values at these times, just to kind of get an idea of what that particle's doing. Uh, at time equals zero, the particle is moving up because we have a positive velocity. At one second, it's still moving up, or I should say it's moving up at one second as well. Now, a lot of things could be happening uh, right in here between zero and one. So we can't really assume that the particle um, is, is continuing to move upward uh, because at a half a second, it's very likely that, you know, the velocity could be negative and it's moving down. So, you know, all we can work with is the data in the table. Three seconds, the particle's still moving up or is moving up at three seconds, I should say. At four seconds, it's resting. Uh, a couple seconds later, we see that at six seconds, it's moving down. At eight seconds, the particle's moving down because of the negative velocity. And at 10 seconds, it's also moving down as well. Approximate V prime of seven. Well, what's the slope of velocity? Well, that's the acceleration of the particle. Indicate units of measure. 
Okay, so let's kind of follow our lead from the previous problem. V prime of seven is approximately, let's look where seven falls in. The rate of change at seven of the velocity, uh, seven would fit in right here between six and eight. So we're gonna do a delta V over a delta T. So the velocity at eight minus the velocity at six, <clears throat> all over eight minus six. Okay, let's go up to the data table and get what we need. So V of eight is negative five minus V of six is negative two. Uh, using the units here, units per second on top divided by um, two, eight minus six. Two and the units in the denominator of time are seconds. Okay, and cleaning that up, it appears that I'm gonna have negative three halves units per second squared. I know you're used to doing that, but I'm just gonna leave it as units per second over seconds, and that's gonna satisfy what we, we need to have. So at this point, looking at the time, I'm going to look at number three with you because uh, it's kind of connected to number one. What is the fewest number of times in the interval from time equals zero to 10 that the acceleration could be zero? Justify your answer. So let me get started here. I'm going to say that A of T could equal zero at least, let's look back up at the data. How many times could the slope um, of this graph right here. I, I could plot this right here if I wanted to plot these points. How many times could the slope be zero? Well, it, it has to do with these V values and what they're doing. Well, I see that V is positive here and then goes to zero and then changes to negative uh, and, and then it looks like it's gonna at, at 10 seconds stay negative. All right, so going back and looking at the data, what I'm gonna see is that V of T increases and then decreases it looks like it's continuing to decrease, so velocity increases, then decreases, still decreases, still decreases, and then it looks like, if I'm making assumptions, it increases. So velocity goes from increasing here to decreasing here, but then it goes back and it increases to negative four. So if velocity is increasing, decreasing, that's one zero slope, and then increases again, well, that's another zero slope, like a minimum. So it, at least two times. Your justification is just what we said, what velocity is doing. We know the graph is differentiable. We know it's continuous because it is differentiable. So if it increases and then decreases, it has to have a max in there. And if it goes from decreasing back to increasing to negative four, uh, it has to have a min. So the slope is zero at least two times on this time interval from zero to 10 because V of T, you can say changes direction twice. Changes direction twice. It would probably be better, but I'm looking at the time, for us to say because V of T increases, then decreases, then increases again. And it might be good to also point out that V of T is continuous, but we know it's continuous because it was told to us that it was differentiable. For this last example, I'm gonna to have to do it partially without um, the video and just have you guys look at it, but take a moment and read through it and then we'll pick out the important parts. So we're asked to find the equation of the line tangent. So right there, we know point slope with the point and slope. We're gonna find an equation of the tangent line and then we're gonna evaluate it at 1.1. So to find the equation of the tangent line, we're gonna need a slope at one. Well, y prime of one is equal to v of one. And from the data table, we see that the velocity at one is four. So what's the point we're gonna use? So again, this is slope, m. The point we're going to use um, at t equals 1, well, that's where this information was important. So y of 1 equals 3, this is going to be our x, and this is going to be our y, our input and our output. So we have everything we need to write the equation of the tangent line. Notice that I wrote the equation of the tangent line using the, um, the values given here, x, y, and m. 
I solved it for y. Now I'm going to evaluate plug in 1.1 for x and over time, and then we'll get our approximation. And as you can see, I plugged in 1.1. I did the calculations, and I ended up with its position of 3.4 units. So these are database problems using some of the past skills that we've learned. Um, and these are very typical of, of AP style free response questions that you might see.